have no opening statement. Oh, I think this is my favorite day of the year. I get to find out if my game day stuff fit from last year. <laughs> you guys can appreciate that, I hope. Go ahead, guys. Anything you got, gals, any questions, let's, let's rock and roll. Yes, sir. Coach, uh, you know, when you, when you uh, go from one year to the next and, and you come up with new ideas for the offense, do you meet with anybody? Do you take ideas? And, and are, there, are there anything uh, – from maybe some of those meetings that, that you have tried to implement in this year's uh, Oh, yeah. I, I think in, in, after the conclusion of last season and not having the production that we wanted to have, there was a – you do a lot of soul searching and a lot of visitations with a lot of people uh, of what's fresh and what's new. I'm a big video guy. Get in tons of video, watch it. I like – the cutting edge of the NFL is always fun to me. I thought Atlanta did a wonderful job last year, so studying a lot of their stuff was, was fun. I'd rather not get in all the college teams that we looked at, but we did a lot of that extensively and uh, visited a lot to just try to freshen up our ideas. I, I think for me personally, it was uh, it was fun to do. It was time to do, and it was uh, much needed for me, a little uh, freshening up of everything, so I enjoyed that a lot this off season. Jim, just just wondering if you can kind of um, uh, describe the, how confounding your your challenge has been here. You know, with a freshman quarterback last year and and maybe substandard offensive line, and now kind of transitioning again on the on on the O line and and having a, a quarterback that appears that works better one way than the other. I mean, is it is it been as difficult of a challenge as, as, as you've encountered over all these? You years? know, I think. Uh, to rate it as difficulty from other jobs, I don't know if that's necessarily true. You go to work, you try to do as good a job as you possibly can. You, you try to put the pieces to the puzzle so you can score enough points to win. Ultimately, that's my job, to work within Kirby's philosophy to score enough points to find victory. It's been challenging, no question. Anytime you're playing a young quarterback, that's always uh, challenging to try to figure out what he can and can't do as early as you possibly can. And uh, we've, we've gotten a lot closer on that. I feel like Jacob's done a good job, and we know one another a lot better now. Uh, challenging? I don't know. I think this job is challenging, whether you're in your eighth year or your first year. Too much, uh, too much is given, much is expected, and uh, we're expected to be at our best every day, and that's my expectations of myself also. So as far as more difficult than others, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. We just go to work and do the best that we can. Uh, Coach, we've seen uh, Sony get a little practice in receiving um, in practice so far. What role do you envision for him in the receiving game this year, and how often might we see him and Nick Chubb on the field at the same time? You know, that remains to be seen. We don't know yet on the schematic part of it. I think Sony's got very good hands and has the ability to do that, to detach and do stuff. Will we do that? It's all going to depend on the opponent. If we feel like we can gain strategic advantages, sure, we'll do about anything we have to do to do that. But I think the, the point being, he's a talented young man that can do a lot of things. And uh, Nick also, you guys know Mr. Chubb, he's a fine football player. So we're blessed to have both those guys. In the, it's always interesting when you have two, and the expectations are to put them both out there a lot. I don't know if that always is the best way to go. Make sure you're getting them, as long as they're getting their touches at the end of the game, that's more important to me. But as long as you've been coaching, you've had some down years and then bounced back with, uh, you know, very productive year. So how much do you draw from your past experience to know that, you know, maybe things can turn around quick? Well, I tell you what, it's difficult, you know, and I think I shared this with you guys postseason last year. When when the things aren't going your well, it's going as way as you'd like for them to go. You question a lot of things and you got to really in your off season, look back on yourself and make doggone sure you're not the reason and make sure you, what part of that you played, you do the best that you possibly can. And I understand that from years past. First years in program inevitably are a little tougher than others. And I reflect back on that, but in no way do I say, oh, okay, all the problems we had is only because it's the first year. That's not true at all. You know, uh, I had a big part of playing that, and my job was to freshen things up and take care of my responsibility when it comes to that. Because ultimately, that once say I've said it before, I'll say it again: the buck stops here when it gets down to production of offense. Jim, you said a minute ago that you wanted to find out what Jacob can and cannot do. What what can he not do? Ooh, well, I tell you what: uh, there's not much he cannot do when it comes to throwing a football. He's a talented young man. Uh, every day we're exploring more things with changing plays and letting him have more freedom. And, uh, you know, he's not Drew Brees. He's not his 16th, 18th, whatever year he is where he can just call the whole ball game. But he's learning more and getting more power within the offense as we go. So I'd say just the limitations of how big a scope of offense you go right now is still a, a work in progress. 
Coach, uh, so, so you spoke on um, offensive production not being where you wanted it uh, t t to be. And, I mean, um, uh, how has uh, red zone offensive production uh, played a role in that? And how do you improve upon that this year? How is red zone? Well, I'll tell you what, guys. All, uh, all spring, Coach put us in those positions to be successful. I think that uh, the off season we, we did a lot of studies on that to find out what went wrong. And inevitably, there was something different a lot of times. You love it when you look back and you critique any job and you find one problem that you get to solve and all of a sudden th that solution, production or results change. That wasn't necessarily our, our problem in the red zone. We had a lot of little different issues. So we made sure schematically we're doing the right things put our bank of plays together as early as we possibly could, and we've been working on those plays continuously since the start of spring through the summer. The kids were out there working all summer on them too, so we're putting a ton of time in. I think all you can do is emphasize your weaknesses and try to get them improved, and I think by putting time in, you're demonstrating that you're trying the best you can to get better down there. Ultimately, we need to be able to run the football with more efficiency down in the red zone, and I think the, we'll be able to do that hopefully. Jim, uh, Nick had commented on how having a, the same offensive coordinator for a second year in a row, something he hasn't had in his career here at Georgia. Uh, how important is that for you to have these guys back again? And have you noticed anything with those guys that they're kind of clicking now that they have some consistency at coordinator? Well, I think that I'll take any of all those jobs. It's no different. When you worked with someone for two years, you're more familiar with who they are, how they behave. Uh, than you are the first year. So I think there's more comfort when it comes with that. What, with offense, it's all about language with offense. Our kids, I'll say a word now and I've said it before, they understand what that word means now. So the familiarity within the language of what we use is refreshing. I can talk to Terry and Nick, Sony, all the older kids, and they get it. I can go call a play right now that maybe we haven't even worked on in a while, and they understand it. The, the recall of the offensive terminology is refreshing. Uh, with Nick, I feel the same comfort. It's fun to come up here the second year and look out there and see the same people. And uh, and that's good to see. I like that. Another Jacob Eason question. Are there any kind of mechanical tweaks he's been working on in the offseason to improve uh, from where he was last year? You know, I, I think that uh, every quarterback has to work on that. And uh, it's like a golfer swing. I liken it, too. You can go out on the golf on the, on the practice round and have the prettiest swing on earth. But when the pressure hits, how are you going to handle it? So you work your hind end off in the off season to get your ba get his base right, get his fundamentals right of his lower body. Taller guys tend to be more Bambi-ish because they're longer limbed and things. So we got to get I don't know Bambi-ish is a word, but you know kind of that's a that's a Cheney word. All right, so so I'm from Missouri. Don't expect a hell of a lot out of me. But at the end of the day, we we'll try to get these big tall kids to play within a cylinder. And it's taller the taller you are. It's harder to do. So to get Jacobs base underneath him, I think he's worked on that all all off season and all summer, and I think he's done a good job. And we're seeing a little bit of that on the football field now. And what you got to find out, can he handle that under duress? And we're seeing that out there on the field. Another Jacob question for you. Um, guys like Matthew Stafford and Aaron Murray both had huge jumps from their freshman to sophomore year. And of course, you weren't here for that. But what kind of factors do you think play a role in that? And are you seeing that with uh, Eason? Well, we'll wait. I don't know if his production, what it will end up being, but I know he's more familiar with what's going on. He's technically better. He's a better football player now. I think he has more command over the offense right now. Will the production show up? I, I don't know all that. I want to win games. And if we have to run it 50 times or t throw it 60 times, I want to be able to do either one. So I suspect he'll play better football as a sophomore than he did as a freshman. Statistically, I don't know how they will relate with Aaron and, 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 and Matthew. Uh, hopefully he does have a big jump. We'd love to see that. That'd help us a lot. Coach Cheney, uh, when Kirby was in here earlier, he said that uh, Jake Fromm was one play away from being in the game. Are we to assume that Jake Fromm is running number two? And how does Bryce Ramsey fit into your uh, quarterback rotation now that he's back? Well, I, Bryce is good. He gives us the added depth of someone who understands, once again, the offense of what we're doing. I'm tickled to death to get him back. As far as depth charts, I'll leave that to Kirby and your own assumptions of where all that plays in. But uh, Jake's doing good, too. I mean, we're pleased with the three of those guys. That quarterback room is a lot of fun right now. It's fun to sit there. I'm tickled Bryce did come back because, A, personally, I like him a lot. I think he brings a lot of football savvy to that room. I think he helps the younger kids. He's a comforting role in there because he wants to be there right now, and it's that's fun for us. 
And uh, Jake Fromm's a competitive kid, as you all well know. We've all watched him compete, and he'll go out there and compete every day. And throughout, with all competition that we have, we're all going to get better, including me. So that's a, that's a good thing about that room. I like it. It's competitive. And our job is to – and I think George's job and everybody's job is to make sure that room remains as competitive as it can for a long time. If you want to have a good, solid football program, keep that room really nice. Jim uh, O'Lineman, um, Ben Cleveland and the freshmen are guys that a lot of people are interested in. Where are they, uh, Ben and, and the freshmen, and how close are they to, to pushing for playing time right away? Well, I think uh, every day they're getting plenty of reps. They're getting the same amount of reps as the ones get, the twos do and the threes do. We double huddle a lot. They're out there getting a ton of work, so we're doing a lot of evaluation. I think Ben's doing a good job. He's competing his butt off, as are those freshman kids. It's a little too early. I think we're probably a couple, probably six, eight more practices. I'll be able to tell you a lot more because the installations will start slowing down. They'll be able to play a little faster. I like the talent level we see in all those young kids. I don't believe there's a kid there that we go, oh, my goodness, what were we thinking? These are kids that can move, can bend, can twist, and have the stature that we're looking for. How quick can they learn the technical side and be productive the way we need them to be remains to be seen. But as we sat here one weekend, I'm very tickled with those kids. And I think they'll all be competing to, to be in that depth chart of being on that bus. With uh, Jay Johnson uh, in the program as an analyst, what, what does he bring to, uh, you know, you're thinking offensively, um, you know, how, how does he mesh with what's going on? Well, well, Jay's been around a lot of different offices also. And uh, Jay's a bright guy. So he'll set in and he he's looking at that thing from 10,000 feet too. And uh, he gets a setback when I'm dealing with quarterbacks and watch and uh, see things that maybe I wouldn't see because I'm so up close and personal. And our relationship's fantastic. And, I really lean on him a lot for his expertise. He's been around a lot of good football. He understands, but I like his perspective on things. It's from up, down, and, hey, Jim, think this. Think, what are you thinking here? Where, where are you going? What's second base if they do this? Because he's played called. You've had it, when you sat there and you've called as many plays, you, you appreciate that other guy that's done that too. Uh, the same thing with James. You know, th those guys all help a lot in, re in, re in resolve to that. Coach, uh, how, how's the receiving core coming along as a whole? And the, is it obviously a goal to try to extend the field more by having a few more options at receiver this year? Yeah, we'd like to be able to do that, no question. We've got to, a, we've got to throw the ball more accurately. We've got, to, we've got to get open better. You know, we had too many drops last year. I mean, everybody, everybody had an aspect of that from protection. When, you don't, when the passing game is not good, it's so easy to go with one position or the other. But ultimately, on our season, we all had a lot of room for improvement. The freshmen we brought in, we're expecting for those guys to add the added depth that we need. One thing, just looking at our offense, and when I'm sitting here and I'm addressing them in this room, there's just more depth. There's more stature. And it's a pleasing thing to watch the young kids, and they all appear to be able to run real well. So with that said, through competition in their room and the ability to run, we should be able to push the ball down the field better. We're optimistic that that will take place. No, you are. Yeah, you no, I, I get two. You get two. I get two. <laughs> no. no, I don't know how that works. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the slot position is really uh, intriguing to me. I'm sure it is to you, to you too, especially with Isaiah kind of unexpectedly going. What have you seen with uh, Akil Crumpton? You know, he's he's just showing up. So yeah. I assume he's got a long way to catch up. And then uh, Mikol or McCole, uh, whatever we properly call him. But uh, how, how's he looking there? Well, let me start with Terry. I think Terry's done a wonderful job. He's put a few pounds on. He's gotten a little stronger. He looks a little faster to me. And uh, Terry's, once again, familiar with the offense. And he's doing a wonderful job out there. I think he's got exceptional hands. I think his mind's in a great spot. His attitude's fantastic. And I love how he's working right now. Uh, with that said, Terry's not a big kid. He's not a giant guy, so we're going to need depth in that room because God knows what's going to happen. The slot position is catching balls in there with the big boys. So there it comes Miko. You bring Miko in, you've got a different type of player. You've got a, an exciting electric kid that can do a lot of things. He's still learning the position, but I'm really pleased with him and his addition in that room. Gives us some more vertical stretch and things like that because he can run. And, and he's catched the ball, and he's got a high football IQ. He gets the game. Whatever we put in, it didn't take him a lot of reps to figure it out. Now, as we move into the Crumpton young man, I don't know yet. You know, he's catching punts. I think he's doing a wonderful job. I don't watch much of that, but what I hear in the staff room, he's doing a good job. I know what limited I've seen him of a week. He's got good hands. He's got good speed. 
and uh, who knows yet? It, it remains to be seen, but he can catch and he can run. So I like those. Those are a damn good place to start. So let's, let's do that. Uh, Coach, I just wanted to go back to the soul searching for just one quick moment. Um, as part of that, how long am I going to soul search you? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so you threw me off my question. Um, Works every time. <laughs> you're a pro. Uh, how much of that did uh, that soul searching involve communicating with some of your senior guys or just guys on your offense? And how is your a lot, a lot. These guys that we work a lot of hours together with all of our offensive staff and trying to empower those guys to, to say more. I tend to have a stronger personality and, a, and they got to understand that they can say whatever they want anytime they want. And so me trying to back down and listen more. And it's a skill, it's, it's not used much. And I uh, found myself as guilty as anybody of that. You got to listen. We got talented offensive staff. I need to listen to them, empower them to bring more ideas in and then sort it out. My job is to sort out their ideas to make sure we're using the good ones. And, uh, but I'm blessed to have those people with me, and I love them, and they work their hind ends off, and uh, when they cut our off season with my mindset of how we're going about it, it's been good. So I'm pleased with that. Coach, again, you were um, – when Kirby was in here, you mentioned how spread's taking over the game a little bit, and you mentioned coaching within Kirby Smart's philosophy. Can you give us a kind of an idea of how much – I don't say you – how much does his philosophy determine what you do? I don't Every say you, bit of it. Well, I'm just saying. Uh, he writes the checks, man. There's no, there's a, no, no but really, I wouldn't. Because we think of him as a defensive guy. So, I mean, I could see you guys saying, yeah. No, I think that there's a misnomer. Just because you, you grow up um, coaching on defense doesn't mean you don't have developed a philosophy of offense. I think trying to be physical, ultimately, I would never go anywhere and work if physicality wasn't a cornerstone of your program. That's what I personally believe in. At age 55, that probably will never change. Balance, you got to have that. you got to win situational offense. All these things, he and I, there is no – we never have a debate. If I want to do something that's a little crazy, I'll go in and ask him. But I've, I'm too old to be fighting over – little teeny things because we believe in the foundation of what we're building here and we're collectively 100 percent behind that physicality balance get your good players the ball win situational offense don't turn the damn thing over all those things are a cornerstone of who we are and there's never a debate on that and we both feel very strongly about that i'm wondering about the slot position whether because we get to see it frankly whether we you know, or looking too much into it. Do you all see those guys that, you know, the Nautas, the Hardmans, and when Brian Harry and Sony are there, mm -hmm. is, is, how much of that is like a, a separate position now, or is it a major staple, major change of the offense you see it, or what? No, I think these are what we kind of woke up, woke up one morning and realized we have some kids that can do some different things. So why not look at them doing those different things? How much that will go one way or the other all remain to be seen when we start putting game plans in. Right now, we'll, Terry would be out there in the slot, and, but who knows what will take place. If we need more physicality, maybe somebody else could go. But right now, we're, we are who we are, and we're going to go that direction. But it is fun to have kids that can do multiple skills. Coach, we talked a little bit about the tight end unit. They seem to be a very close bunch and all kind of – bring about different qualities. How, how do you get them all involved in the game when you've got a slew of them? Well, it's competition. Who wants to play? You know, ultimately, it's no different. That's what's been fun about so far. I sit here and I look at a bunch of wide receivers, young kids competing, tight end room, competition, uh, quarterback room, competition, everywhere, running back room, competition, young linemen coming in, more competition. That makes us all better. Those all kids, they have a great – attitude about they understand not all of them are going to play but they're all competing within one another how do you get them on the field whoever earns the right to get on the field you know, that's the way i look at it it's a we're always going to play the best player so whoever is the best at doing that task that'll be the guy that will play and ultimately they're all a little different so uh, we've been able to find room for most of them so i suspect that won't change i love tight ends too by the way it's one of my favorite spots is it fair to say right tackle and left guard are the most competitive spots on your offensive line? And uh, with Pat Allen 
Dyshawn Sims, uh, how are they doing uh, this preseason? And are you guys um, firm on keeping Isaiah at left tackle? I don't think anything's as firm as everybody wants to make it right now. I, and I don't know, I'd be reluctant to point out one spot's more competitive than the other. Ultimately, Sam is trying to find who the five best football players are we got in the front and play them. And uh, so that's where we're at right now. So we're trying to sort all that out. We're probably still several practices away from Coach wanting to sit down and and make those tough decisions and make some uh, and move some people around and do some different stuff. But right now, it's all about finding out who we think we can win with now. Coach, uh, no, you can't comment on anybody specifically, but when it comes to recruiting, you were talking about that offense. I mean, I'm sorry, you are talking about that quarterback room and keeping it stocked. How important is it for you to get a third guy in that room for next year and uh, you know keep that depth, keep guys in there to develop? And also, is it is it – is depth as important as it is to just find, just to keep that room stocked with guys to, so that they can stay in your system and keep them, you know, kind of coming along and learning? You know, I think you got both qualities. Ultimately, it's tough right now. You, you, you add another super quarterback in that room, the following year will be even tougher. But that's part of being a championship football team. You've got to be able to go out and recruit and convince kids that this is where they belong. And I think quarterbacks are understanding this is a – a style of offense that can help them as they try to approach moving on to the next level of football. And so we're always going to try to be as competitive as we can. And how many quarterbacks we take in a class, that's completely up to coach. But my job is to recruit the best I possibly can and put the best players we can in that room. And collectively, as a staff, we do that very well. We understand the importance of working with one another to make sure we get the best players. Scott, one more question. Hey, coach, with it being uh, your second year with Coach Smart, how much easier or maybe smoother do you expect it to be on the sidelines on game days, uh, just chemistry-wise between you two? No, I think it will be fine. I don't anticipate that being any issue. I went back up in the box, and it worked out good for us. I, we talk good, and I don't anticipate any problems on game day. Thank you. Guys, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good day.